Hello, I am Seamus Dunahu of Eve University, and this is the seventh and final episode of How to Survive Eve Online, February 2018 edition. At this point, with the career path hub being completed, you're probably wondering what to do next. And I do have a few comments and ideas on that subject. First of all, uh, you'll probably want to become more familiar with your overview, since besides your camera, the overview is going to be your primary window into what's going on around you. It'll make certain hostels easier to find. The overview, however, is itself really complicated, just like everything else in EVE Online. So that could be an entire episode unto itself. At EVE University, the overview setup is an entire class unto itself. All right. Uh, EVE University does have guides on this. You can open up the chat channel, overview.e-uni, click join, uh, and you can read through the instructions in the channel message of the day. Um, but to load an EVE University approved overview setup, uh, you would click required first, then any of these optional presets, and then required final. I'm not going to go too deep into that. For the time being, the overview that I've guided you into now will suffice for most player versus environment pur purposes. Uh, it's basically just the CCP default overview with adding the velocity, radial velocity, and angular velocity columns. Second, there are a lot of things that can be done in EVE Online generally. Uh, so, for example... Oh. Here's the page on EVE University Overview if you want to read more on that. But a player named Altru has made a chart called the EVE Online Careers Graph. Uh, and this is, this at least attempts to be a comprehensive high-level summary of all the different activities that EVE Online players are engaged in. Um, if and it's eve-guides.fr slash images slash wtd.jpg. I'll give you the link in the description. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot that you could be doing. Uh, regardless of... Docking permission requested. Docking request accepted. Regardless of what path you take, you're probably, you are most likely not going to stay in whatever solar system you're in now. You're going to be moving about, which means you need to figure out a way to uh, handle the stuff that you've accumulated so far. Either selling it off or moving it, or maybe you're just going to leave it here for later use uh, and maybe forget about it or something. Uh, but if you want to sell the stuff, one thing you can do, as an example, uh, is right-click each item type that you don't have a use for view market details, and you can see how much it's being bought or sold for in your region. Right? Uh, the under buyers, the orders that are highlighted in green, are buy orders that are close enough to you that they will accept your stuff. Right? Uh, additionally, some of these buy orders, so that's what's covered under range. So this buy order right here for fried, inter fried interface circuits. Uh, is based in Luce, but it's got a range of one jump. So this buyer will accept fried interface circuits sold uh, to him or her up to one jump away from Luce. Um, some buy orders have a minimum volume. So this buy order over here based in Sheenan's will offer a higher price, uh, but you must be in station and you must sell at least 100 units to this buy order. They won't take quantities less than 100. Uh, you'll also notice that there's an expiry time on market orders. Anything that's 90 days or less was a market order that was set up by a player. If it's more like 300 days or more, that was set up by an NPC. Now the easiest way to try and sell off the stuff that you've accumulated would be to right-click the stack in question, uh, sell this item, uh, by default, it should say immediate, which means it's going to try and look for an existing buy order that will purchase this stuff from you. Uh, and then you can go ahead and click the sell button. 
If you want a higher asking price, you can instead set up your own sell order, so you can choose uh, some other time interval besides immediate and then type in a larger number. Like say, maybe I'll only sell these contaminated Lorentz fluids for 300,000 interstellar credits. I can do that. But then I'm, uh, I'm gonna have to wait for somebody to come around and actually decide, yes, they wanna buy it for that price. They may not want to, I mean, there are other sell orders in the same region right now that are prices that high, uh, but there are also sell orders that are lower priced than that. Granted, they only seem to be selling single unit quantities, but whatever. So you can sell your stuff uh, right here in station. Uh, if you've got skill books that you still have uh, lying around, you're probably going to want to go ahead and inject all of them. Uh, some of them you can't use because you have to be subscribed to the game, so that requires Omega, uh, Clone State Omega. Uh, so you can't uh, make use of those right away. Which, one other thing you can do, Control A, right click, repackage. That repackages all the modules. Uh, and then right click, stack all. So, by repackaging everything and then stacking everything, it's fewer distinct item stacks, which visually makes it a little bit neater. Uh, as a new character, you will probably give in the... You are probably already started off with your racial industrial skill. So for Galente characters, uh, you were given a couple of Nereus already by this point. They require the skill Galente Industrial 1. Of course, this will vary depending on what race of character you chose. So if you chose a Minmatar character, you were probably given a Minmatar industrial ship of some sort, and you already started off with skill Minmatar industrial level one. Um, so you can right-click, assemble the ship, right-click, uh, open cargo hold. Close that, close that. Right click, hold down the shift key, open a cargo hold, and you can take a lot of this stuff and just shove it into your industrial. Uh, it's a little bit more volume than what the industrial can carry, but selling off some of this stuff will help. If you've got asteroid ore, uh, you can sh left click, shift left click, right, let go of the shift key, right click, reprocess, <clears throat> and just reprocess it into minerals. Um, asteroid ores are processed in batches of 100, so you'll have some leftover scraps. Just hang on to those. Um, but that will, that should also reduce the, uh, amount of volume that you're trying to carry. I, you do want to be careful about, oh, implants, I almost forgot. Let me talk about skill training for a moment. Uh, so it takes time to train all of these skills uh, without going into too much detail. Um, the higher your attribute points, the faster you train skills. For a clone state Omega, every skill has every skill has a primary and a secondary attribute. So right now I'm training hull upgrades, which is intellect, memory. Intellect's the primary, memory is the secondary. So the rate at which I'm training skills into this, for a subscribed character, Clone State Omega, it's the primary plus one half the secondary per minute. For an alpha, such as this character, uh, it's one half of that. So one half the primary plus one quarter the secondary. So my character sheet, attributes tab, intelligence is 20, memory is also 20. So being a Clone State Alpha, it's half the primary, which is 10, plus a quarter of the secondary, which is 5. So I'm training 15 skill points per minute. Hull upgrades is under armor. Ah, uh, yeah, if you mouse over it. So right now, I can see that I've got 27,127 uh, skill points in this. To get it all the way up to level 5, we'll need 512,000 skill points, which will take a while. Quite a while. Just to get up to level four, which is only about five and a half uh, 
times as small, is still going to take a little under two days. So there are implants that can increase your attribute points. You'll probably want to go ahead and plug those in. These are just very your very basic implants, so uh, they're not too expensive. You can easily get replacements if you get pod killed at some point. I do advise being cautious if you're going to shove everything that you own into one ship. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, if other players shoot at you unprovoked in high security space, Con the Concord police will destroy them. But this may not necessarily happen fast enough to save your ship. And when your ship explodes, as you saw earlier, on average, about half of your stuff is going to survive in the wreckage. Uh, each module, each stack of ammunition, each uh, stack of item, each item stack in your cargo hold is going to flip its own coin, heads or tails, to determine whether or not it survives in the wreckage. So if you're carrying a lot of valuable stuff in your ship, then it may be profitable for other players to do what's called a suicide gank. So some player, one player will have run a cargo scan on you while you're running on by and notice, oh hey, this guy's carrying a whole lot of stuff in his cargo hold. Other, uh, other players uh, who are friends of his get the word and they ambush you as you emerge from a Stargate. They'll be fried by the Concord police, but not fast enough to save your ship. So you, your, your ship explodes, their ships explode. And then the accomplice who never fired a shot flies on up to all the wrecks and loots and salvages them all and then runs off and splits the and sells it all and splits the profits with the combat squad and probably whoever ran the cargo scan on you in the first place. So that's called suicide ganking. So you don't want to carry too much valuable stuff in one ship all at once. Okay. Uh, there are other, of course, other dangers in EVE Online. Uh, EVE Online does rightly have a certain kind of reputation. There are behaviors that are tolerated by crowd control productions that would get you banned from other MMOs, such as scamming other players, robbing the guild bank, uh, and so on. Right. Uh, Somewhere in the EVE University uh, class library, there may be a guest lecture on the dark side of EVE. Uh, so that might be worth listening to. Um, for other content that you'll want to do, uh, your next step will probably be to go start the Sisters of EVE level 1 epic arc. So that starts with a character known as Sister Alatura. So you would open up people and places, search type, agent. Search string, sister, A-L-I-T-U-R-A, -A, press return. There should only be one agent, and it should say Sister Alatora, a level one Arnon, nine, uh, however many jumps it'll be, depends on where you start off from, Epic Arc Agent Security. Right-click, set destination. Now do be careful, make sure that this route is all yellows or greens or blues. A mixture of yellow, green, and blue. That's a high security route. If any of it's orange or red, you need to go to your auto, your A icon here, and set to prefer safer. All right. Prefer shorter will take the shortest number of jumps to get to that destination, even if it goes through low or null security space. So prefer safer will keep you in high security uh, for your entire route. This will be especially important if you're coming in from, say... Uh, Amarian or Minmatar space. Again, depending on where exactly you started. Uh, I'll cover the Sisters of Eve epic arc in a different series of videos, which I will probably start recording next week, uh, but that would probably be your next step. Um, if you're going to do that, there are recommendations uh, for the series, for that series, I will again be using this catalyst most of the time. Um, I'm going to have you 
I'll talk more about the capacitor in that series, uh, but capacitor management is important. Submodules require capacitor energy, and if you run out of capacitor energy, then your modules will not function until you give the capacitor a moment to recharge itself. Or possibly a minute to recharge itself, but a lot can happen in one minute. With this setup, I'm not cap stable. Uh, there are modules that I almost advised you to fit to your ship, but they required uh, skill books that I wasn't sure if the game would give them to you or not. Um, I believe I had to go purchase energy grid upgrades for myself. Um, oh, no, wait. Maybe you start off... I don't remember if you start off with energy grid upgrades or not. Let me double check that. Well, I didn't train energy grid upgrades level 1, so you do start off with a skill at level 1. I should have had you insert uh, level 2 on this. Uh, so let me go ahead and do that now. Engineering, energy grid upgrades, level 2. There, that'll be useful. Because there are various modules that can help your ship perform better, uh, but all of them have uh, prerequisite skills just to fit the module in the first place. So if I try to drag this in right now, unable to bring this module online. I mean, I can fit it, but it's going to remain offline. Maybe I'll drag it in anyway, just so that it's, I'm not carrying it in the cargo hold. But you get the idea. Um, I'll talk more about the fitting of the ship uh, in that next series, uh, The Bloodstained Stars. Finally, it has been historically demonstrated that player retention in EVE Online does depend heavily on uh, who you connect with. Uh, so if you're just running it alone... I mean, the game can be enjoyable if you just run it alone. Uh, but players who group up with other players on a regular basis are more likely to stick around long term. So you may want to give some thought to looking for uh, player corporations to join. In EVE Online, every character is a member of a corporation, and some corporations are a member of uh, either a faction, if it's an NPC corporation, or an alliance, if it's a player corporation. What EVE Online calls player corporations, other MMOs call guilds. Right. Uh, so if you're interested in looking for another corporation to join, uh, let's see, the EVE menu, social, corporation, uh, and you can try to search for various corporation advertisements in this window. Uh, so you can specify what sort of uh, activities you're looking for. Um, now, personally, I am a little bit biased. Um, EVE University is the oldest player corporation that is dedicated to teaching new players how to play. And if you want instructions on how to join EVE University, let me go back to the name page here. Applying to EVE University. Here we go. All right, so if you want to join EVE University, this uh, page on the EVE University wiki de details that process. Um, oh, one of the other dangers I forgot to mention about EVE Online, um, there is a feature called War Declarations, so a player, corporation, or alliance can pay Concord a bribe, I mean a fee, to formally declare war on another player, corporation, or alliance. Uh, EVE University has been almost under constant war declarations for the past two or three years. Uh, there's been some talk from CCP about possibly revising or overhauling the system, but that doesn't seem to be uh, coming anytime soon. At the very least, EVE University's classes are open to the public, so you don't actually need to be a member of the corporation uh, to be able to learn from us. Our lectures are open to the public. Uh, you will want to learn how to set up Mumble, which is a voice over IP program. Uh, so here's the Mumble setup guide. 
Um, and aside from that, I can't think of uh, anything else to cover. Uh, but there, are, if you are interested in playing EVE Online, this should hopefully give you hmm, just a very small taste of what the gameplay is like. Uh, I haven't, I've barely scratched the surface on what can be done in EVE Online. Uh, there is a lot more to learn, if you're interested. Uh, so hopefully this should give you some sort of idea uh, as to what to expect. Uh, I'm Seamus Dunahoo of EVE University. Thank you for watching.